Sita Raman on February 1st as she stands in the parliament to present her sixth consecutive budget. Despite the fact that this will be an interim budget, the common man will keep his eyes peeled when it comes to the tax policies. But will there be any major announcement in taxes this year? To talk more about this, today I have with me Mr. Akhil Chandra, partner and national leader GMS, Grant Thornton. Hi Akhil. So my first question to you is, uh, this year with regards to economic downturn and inflation and global headwinds, what do you actually expect from the upcoming interim budget, especially when it comes to the taxation policies? So when we, you know, a lot of, lot of expectations people have, you know, because it's the last budget of this existing government. Mm. Uh, next year, you know, we're going into a general elections, 2024. So let's understand, you know, whenever this last budget of the existing government comes, how it's rolled it up, you know. Mm. So basically, it's an interim budget. And, you know, till now we have seen 13 interim budgets happening in our country. And on all the interim budgets, we've seen not major tax announcements or incentives given to the people, mm -hmm. you know. And and let's understand why this interim budget comes in. The budget, you know, the government needs expenditure till the time new government is formed. Yeah. Because these these proposals which are announced are applicable till 31st of March. Mm -hmm. And from that period to the period till the new government is formed, government needs to spend money and they need a parliament approval mm -hmm. to, to do that, you know. And that's why this interim budget comes in. As I said, we, we, you know, as per the trend we've seen in the past, all the interim budgets, there's no major updates which have been done. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, you know, when Piyush Goyal was appointed as a finance minister, yeah. there were a lot of tax incentives which were given to the people. Mm -hmm. The first one was 6,000 rupees to 12 crore farmers. Yeah. The second one, the increase in the limit of standard deduction. Mm -hmm. And then there's a rebate you know that up to five lakh rupees, a taxpayer is not right is, is exempt to pay any taxes. Mm -hmm. So you never know. You know this budget also, and this government has been you know always giving their surprises to us. But whatever they do, they do in the interest of the public mm -hmm. and to safeguard the interest of the country. As you rightly said, the global you know there's a lot happening in the global arena, be it ongoing Ukraine war or you know there's continuing tension in Gaza or you know in, in the sea uh, Red Sea you've seen yeah. will it will it impact India I think it is impacting the entire world we cannot say that it will not impact India however you know over and over again India has shown their resilience you know they've they've proved uh, you know Indian economy has proved themselves mm -hmm. as for the S&P global you know it's a global research firm uh, the data shows that India will have, you know, will grow, the GDP of India will grow between 6.5 to 7 percent in 2024 as well. So overall I don't see and and it's interesting to see what changes government will come out in the, in the entire budget mm -hmm. and, and as, as I said, this government always gives you the surprises. So you're still on the fence whether it will be a populist budget or simply a financial stop gap budget? Let's, it's interesting to see. <laughs> But we've seen in 2019, mm -hmm. and you know, is, is Constitution of India stops us, you know, coming out with a complete budget or or give tax incentives or you know, uh, announce ma announce major policies? No, no, it's it's allowed. As per the Constitution of India, is allowed. It's 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 government who decided that you know they don't want to come out with the policies and you know incentives because they're getting into a general election. But as I said in 2019, we have changed. We have seen that trend getting, you know breaking down, uh, the government has given a lot of incentives. Mm. So this year also we, we can see something of that sort. But whatever they do, they do in the overall economic interest of the country. Okay, uh, Akhil, you know, taking a bit from that, uh, when we talk about rebates and anything, do you think they're going to roll out something if they are rolling out something in terms of tax rebates? Uh, will it be in more in the old regime or new regime or if it's both, where do you think the rebate to, is going to fit in? So, so you know, let's let's understand when this new tax regime was introduced 
you know, at the first instance. Hmm. It was in Union Budget 2020, hmm. applicable from financial year 21, 22. Okay. And in 2020, last budget, 2023, uh, you know, for this financial year 22, 23, we have seen major changes happening in the new tax regime. Earlier, old tax regime was a default tax regime, yeah. and new tax regime was an optional one. But however, over the years of, you know, span of three years, we've seen they've made the major shift, making new tax regime is a default tax regime and old tax regime is a, again, an optional one. Yeah. So th that's, that's a major change. Hmm. And you asked me that where you see more rebates, more changes coming in, hmm. obviously in the new tax regime, because last year also they've come out with a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. They've rationalized on the slab rates. They've rationalized on the, on the surcharge rates hmm. under the new regime, you know forcing HNIs to uh, adopt new regime. So the focus is very clear. They want to simplify mm -hmm. and, and you know, administrative hassles to be reduced both at the employer, employee end, and they want to simplify the entire tax pro, pro, you know, regime. So mm -hmm. that's why the focus would be on the new tax regime, if anything will come this year. Any particular sectors you think the government should focus on? I think that's a over pending demand by the taxpayers. <laughs> it's a, it's it's over the over the last because I have a 15 years of experience, mm. you know, in taxation, and whenever you know the different industry forums comes to us, BCI, SHM, asking for a pre-budget expectations, every time you know the arm admi, so-called yeah. arm admi, the salary class people like us sitting in this room, you know, they always ask for increase in you know. It, the chapter 8 deductions like ATC, yeah. which it's, it's going from, I think, I don't know how many, from last 15 years I see, though it's uh, 1.5 is like for last number of years, maybe a decade I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And in medical insurance, they've, they've done some changes, but if you ask me, you know, we do a comparison with uh, the pe benefits which professionals and business, you know, pe people into business, they claim mm -hmm. that kind of expenditure and, you know, claims are not allowed to the salary class. So it's over pending demand hmm. and I think they should they should do something at least increase deduction under section ATC hmm. from 1.5 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs to 3 lakhs and increase limits of the MediClaim and increase limits of you know their traditional uh, benefits under ch children hostel allowance or education allowance is 100 rupees or 300 rupees. Yeah. Can you beat that? They were introduced I think I can say that 30, 40 years back and that time of you know, the cost of education was 100 or 300, but today you've seen the cost has gone way up. Way up so yeah. the government should consider those things and allow. Mm -hmm. And even under new regime, because we've seen under new regime, many exemptions and deductions are going away. Mm -hmm. so they should look into that. You know, when we talk about old regime and new regime, this has always been something that I kept asking myself that what was the need for the government to introduce new regime, new regime while retaining old regime? <laughs> <laughs> See, as I said, uh, you know, we've seen uh, over, the, over the last, you know, number of years, there are numerous exemptions and deductions which, are, which have been given mm -hmm. and, you know, and due to this, the, the system has become very complex. There are exemptions uh, under HRA, LTA, mm -hmm. uh, deductions under Chapter 6A, which is ATC, ATG for donation. ATD for you know medical insurance. So these these things are provided by the government, you know, as a step to to give benefit to the salary class. However, I think when 2020 this concept of new tax regime was introduced, basically you've seen you know most of the employers opening up a window from December to February, uh, you know, to submit the investment proofs, mm. uh, and it, it's a cumbersome process. Uh, there's a lot of time and efforts which goes into it. Uh, similarly, from a government perspective, they, they feel that people are submitting the fake bills and you know, they're taking advantage of the system. So to, to, to do away with the entire thing, they've introduced this concept, you know. Obviously, the essence was to, you know, simplify. make it simplify. Hmm. So that even a person can, you know, just file the tax return without taking the help of any professionals. And, and, and you know, all the time which is going into uh, claiming these exemptions, deductions, submitting the proofs, uh, you know, that's one side of the story. But other side of the story, uh, in, you know, if you ask me, last year, 6.7 crore returns are filed. 
and 85 percent of the people still use old taxi oh, yes. so it, it takes you know it takes time maybe for the young generation yeah. who are pick, picking up the you know jobs and and taking their uh, careers forward and and you know filing their returns the tan new taxi regime they, they they want to simply use the simplify way of filing the tax returns and you know without getting it but you know people like us who have a habit of investment and you're claiming that benefits it will take its own time so you know uh, speaking of that uh, do you think there has been an uptick this year when it comes to the new tax regime uh, yeah i think uh, in the first year it was hardly less than 5% of the people but this year 15% of the people have 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 gone for new tax regime mm -hmm. so it's a positive development and i think the more benefits which government is coming out uh, you know in in like last year they've, they've increased the limit of standard deduction rationalized the mm -hmm. maybe they can increase the limit of standard deduction more earlier it was not allowed under the new tax regime there was no standard yeah, deduction now yeah. it's allowed maybe they can increase from 50000 to 75000 or 1 lakh you know rationalize uh, slab rates more though they have mm -hmm. done it last year uh, and like in house property um uh, it's interesting you know the only benefit which is allowed to the seller class is the loss under the house property yeah but under new tax regime uh, whatever interest you are paying hmm. uh, to buy a house that is not allowed for a self occupied property hmm. there is a limit of 2 lakh rupees which is allowed under you know house property hmm. uh, uh, you know whatever interest you are paying up to 2 lakhs is allowed old regime it's allowed but under new tax regime for self occupied property it's not allowed hmm. for let out property under old tax regime it's 100% allowed with a limitation of 2 lakh rupees hmm. and rest of the loss can be carried forward to the next years however under the new tax regime interest is allowed hmm. but up to the amount you receive the rent from the from the tenant yeah. that's a you know hardship i think they should bring more parity on that side and hmm. even the carry forward of the losses you know if you've paid more interest hmm. and you're not able to claim the benefit in this year the carry forward is also not allowed under the new tax regime so the first they should remove the capping hmm. which they they brought in you know few years back on the loss on house property earlier there was no capping on you know you can claim the loss on house property if you've incurred and if you let it out and you've incurred actually hmm. but that was capped up to 2 lakhs and then uh, carry forward is not allowed under tax regime and you know again the capping of up to rent received so it becomes very complicated so they should bring parity and increase the limit to make it more attractive i can say that okay understood uh, my last question to you is uh, you know as per you where do you think the government should focus in terms of taxation policy in this budget that they have overlooked basically i think we uh, as as the theme of today's discussion is more on you know salary class people and and you know the, the so called aam aadmi which which hmm. we say so as i said in the beginning you know they have long pending demands of uh, giving benefits you know uh, when they invest towards you know different uh, instruments like provident fund public provident fund um, and as i said house property you know they should rationalize on the on the on the amount limited up to 2 lakhs so those are the demands the government should look into um, and should give more benefit on those sides you know uh, rest i think the government has been continuously working to rationalize the the, the entire regime and the system and they've, they've they've worked over the last few years we've seen a lot of changes happening and and that's why the number of returns people you know file is 6.7 for 6.7 crore which is tremendous i remember you know uh, over 10 years back it was the number was uh, around 3 crore and all so the people are actually coming up and And, and you know declaring yeah. their tax returns and all so government should should focus and give more benefits to them but as i said it's entire budget <laughs> <laughs> so everything is up for grabs yeah, yeah. yes thank you so much for your time akhil thank you thank you uh, for giving this opportunity having a wonderful discussion thank you thank you